Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time seeing my face, I am Jaleesa, your friendly neighborhood lawyer. And for all my returning subscribers, welcome back my alien allies. It's nice to have you here. Welcome to another episode of the Alien in the Courtroom series, a series aimed at helping young entrepreneurs and business professionals and making better legal decisions for their brand. <laughs> and today's video is gonna be a little bit different from our usual routine. Usually I teach you a topic and then tell you how it relates to your business today i'm going to be doing a reaction a commentary particularly this episode is going to look at supercent versus crayola if you haven't heard of her supercent is a black social media personality who went on to form her own makeup line and it's a widely successful makeup line she did an instagram live where she was basically going over the problems or the interactions that she had with crayola and i think this video has a lot of important information for young entrepreneurs to watch and to learn from so just in case you haven't seen it we're going to react to it together and I'm going to tell you the lessons that you should take away from this video from her experience and what we can learn as just viewers and business owners ourselves so that we don't make those same mistakes as always it is important that i stress that these videos are intended for educational purposes only in no way should you consider me to be your own personal lawyer and if you have very specific questions to your own brand or business please seek outside representation please do <laughs> what i think is really impressive about supercent is that she's created a brand that relies on a concept and not another brand's own intellectual property for example you don't want to use lifesavers candy and then take the lifesavers pictures the font um their logo their outwards packaging their candy packaging and put that onto a makeup palette it's not original it's not creative and you can possibly end up in trouble doing so when you're thinking of inspiration and combining two different fields that necessarily don't mix you want to think concepts not brands think concepts so here's an example of a concept beauty bakery what Beauty Bakery has done is that they are combining the concept of baked goods with makeup. And it doesn't necessarily tie to any brand out there. They're not Sprinkles inspired. They're not Magnolias inspired. They are inspired by baked products in general. It's another example is Supercent's crayon case. That's combining school supplies with makeup. That's a better way to form a interesting brand a creative brand an original brand and a brand that people will want to keep coming back to for more supercent speaks on why she's not suing crayola for stealing her crayon case idea let's get into it the email again 419 it's follow us from our communications of june to July 2017, where you agreed to redesign your cosmetic brushes and cases to remove Crayola, Serpentine, and Chevron trademarks. We note that the cosmetic brushes has sufficiently been admitted to remove the Serpentine design, and thank you for your assistance. We recently discovered, however, the box of crayons palette still got their trademark. So they basically saying, these lines right here, they own this line. They own these lines. They own the green and yellow combo. That's what they own. They also made us change this on the gift card. They own the green and yellow combo. As we discussed in episode one and in episode two, and I will share it again, a trademark refers to a word, phrase, symbol, product shape, or logo by a manufacturer or merchant to identify its goods and distinguish those goods by those made or sold by another. Again, we refer to logos, slogans, product shape, words, phrases, symbols, all of those are referred to as marks. And you can also trademark a color. Gucci has trademarked a red and green stripe combo. And even 
Christian Louboutin has trademarked the fam famous red sole underneath that we discussed in previous episodes as well. From what she's telling us, they seem to own a trademark on this yellow and green combination. I looked up what the chevron and what the serpentine looks like. We already kind of know what a chevron is. Chevron is that popular zigzag tape situation that everybody had on their dorms back in college. The little fun tapes that have the zigzags on it. That's usually what is referred to as chevrons. And Crayola's serpentine pattern seems to be the little snake or the curvature that happens around the rim of each crayon and around the storage bins of their crayons. It's that rectangle that has the little squiggle inside. So it is possible that the chevron and serpentine could also be considered trademarks, but they might also even be copyright protected as well. It can be considered a design, um, maybe a logo in a sense to make it a trademark. So think of the Gucci stripes, the red and green stripes that they have trademarked. Think of the Adidas four stripes on the side of their shoe that are trademark. I would see it more as a copyright to me because it is a pictorial work of art that is maybe original and deserving of its own copyright protection. I think of it in terms of the chevrons on cheerleading costumes. There was a popular case. Oh, it was varsity brands versus like star athletica, something like that. It's a popular fashion long case. And the chevrons or the stripes that were on the cheerleading uniforms, certain stripes are actually trademarked or copyrighted actually. In that case, it was dealing with the copyright of those stripes, claiming that they had a copyright on the design of the shapes, lines, colors, and the color blocking of the uniform. That's why I see the serpentine and the chevron as more of a copyright law situation. Because if, if it's your shit, we got no problem with changing it. It's yours, but we gonna change it. I think this is very smart of her. Like she doesn't put up much of a fuss, she just does it. And we even sent them our new design so they can approve it before we even released it. So then, you know, because they don't, they don't see, they don't see young, like they don't see indie brands. So then they wrote again, when they wrote. They wrote Friday, this was Friday. Just wanted to pass along the online comments we have seen. They seen it, but you know, but they don't see, they don't see independent brands according to black folks. Black folks feel like because you're a small brand, people don't see you. I just wanted to assure you that Crayola did not wish to cause any damage to your business or to downplay your creativity. We are grateful for how considerate you have been with our request to distinguish your brand and packaging from our trademarks. We are very pleased to see your entrepreneur drive pay off. Crayon wishes you, wishes you continued and colorful success. I guess unless you're like a huge offender and you're known for doing this, I think most from the cases that I have read, a lot of companies want to avoid legal drama and legal issues. So they are more of a collaborative effort. I don't think you will find um, a company that automatically goes straight for it and comes out aggressively at an indie brand. I think most of the times they will send you a, a cute little cease and desist and ask you to change these things on, or else there'll be problems. Bitch, they've been seeing me since last year. Don't make it seem like just because I'm a small brand they don't see me. But the thing is, the only thing I was bothered by with Crayola was their slogan, the color outside the lines. Like, let's be real. Like, I, I came out with that slogan the day I dropped. It's finally okay to cut outside the lines. That's the only thing. Other than that, they brand is crayons. Our brand is not crayons. Our brand is school supplies. School supplies. That's the whole, if they just gonna do crayons for their whole brand, that's on them. We doing school supplies, bitch, we got. I don't know if the color outside the lines, I don't know who that belonged to first. I feel like it's a something I've heard before. So I would assume that Crayola probably already had that in their bag. You can have the same slogan as someone else, but I think it just depends on the industry. So Crayola could possibly own color outside the lines when it comes to stationary field. I'm not sure what that field would be called where it's like stationary goods. And maybe Supercent could own the slogan in the fashion industry because the whole point of a trademark is that it applies to only the field in which you trademark it in. Brushes that look like pencils. We got a, a contour book that look like a composition notebook and it's called contourization notebook. This is creative. We got lashes that look like a calculator. Like we got a, a palette that look like a ruler. 
We got a, a, a pattern that looked like a box of crayons. We got a, a highlighter powder, a pressed highlighter powder that looked like an honor roll. School supplies. That's her concept. So she's built multiple products around this concept. But Crayola is only focusing on one product, which is the box of crayons eyeshadow palette. We got lip glosses called the Hall Pass Collection. We got eyeliner that look like a Sharpie. Like our brand mm. is not just about crayons. So I'm not mad. It just, I feel like it's just suddenly all of a sudden they only did collaborations, you know? So now all of a sudden Crayola got a whole, a whole beauty line, you know? But again, if it's only about crayons, how can I be, I'm, I'm, I'm not affected. It's, it's, it's just about crayons. We, oh, look, we got a beauty sponge. Our theme is, our theme is school supplies. It's not just crayons. So by right, it, first of all, you, I'm not about to poke a bill. Let's talk about that. Everybody talking about so old go sue when, bitch, it's Crayola. Stop playing. Like, I mean, bitch, I'm going to spend more money even playing with them. When I infringe <laughs> on their brand, they ain't sue me. They ain't, you know, like, they politely so you came can't to me. Actually, and we change it. We ain't fight with them. If that's, they, that's, if they own that. They own these lines. No matter how petty we may feel it be, they own them lines. If they own it, just like if you own some shit and somebody trying to use your shit on their brand, you want them to change it. it Absolutely. About they were saying Beyonce was petty because, you know, Beyonce owned, the, owned, like, a certain pink or whatever. And, like, some lady came out with something called Fiance. And, like, she was selling it, you know. And, and everybody was saying Beyonce was petty for... For telling her to um to to, to um to stop it. No, that's not petty. If you own some shit, that's what you own. They have the right to tell me, bitch, take that off. That's mm -hmm. my shit. So we changed it with no problem. So I understand. I infringe their brand first. So why can I be mad at them for you know seeing some shit is popping? Okay, cool. Like they have more access to bitch. They own Crayola. They own Hallmark too. Let's talk about that. I'm not about to poke no bell, bitch. I'm not about to go to them. Oh look, you stole my shit. Uh, I'm taking you to court, bitch. No, them people could have sued me. Them people could have, for this palette right here, mm -hmm. this is the old palette. For this palette, they own, they own a green and yellow combo. Them people could have sued me. And not only just sued me and made me change it, but they could have been like, you know what? I want all that money that you made for them palettes too. Because Period. that was our brand. They didn't. Period. It was very nice. They could have sued and took back a lot of the money that she made off of those palettes. There's no point in getting mad when you get inspiration from other brands and you use that brand's trade dress, you use that brand special sauce to create your own makeup palette, you are asking for trouble. I give Supercent props at least on making packaging that doesn't look necessarily exactly like Crayola. It definitely gives you inspiration. It gives you a hint of Crayola's packaging, but there are people out there who are taking the exact same front image of the candy or the front image of chocolate the front image of anything and slapping it onto an eyeshadow palette or slapping it onto eyelashes and that is not okay you are going to get in trouble for that you're going to possibly run into these same problems that supercent ran into especially because you're infringing on a copyright the product packaging can still be copyrighted by the brand itself copyright applies to pictorial graphic and sculptural works and it also applies to photographs of people or photographs of things a photograph is entitled to copyright protection just as much as a digital design of and something is entitled to copyright protection y'all be underestimating yourself if something is popping it don't matter who made it who created it if it's popping bitch they gonna see it Mm. My shit went viral. It did. In in the cosmetic world. If it's popping, it's popping. Don't make it seem like they ain't see it because they've been writing me before I even launched. You saw the people say they wrote me in April mm -hmm. telling me, bitch, don't release that. Take it down. And then she still did it. And they, they emailed me multiple times before, I, before they even got a response out of me. So when I finally responded to them, they were still nice. They wasn't mean. That's really nice. People could have sued my black ass off and set me down. Okay? The people could have said. If you didn't respond to those first emails, they could have came back even harder and stronger the next time. You know, they could have. I mean, when debt collectors call you, you know, if you don't respond to the first one, they go harder than the next time. So they could have gone even harder than that. And they still came very nice and politely and tried to communicate and work with her. That's really nice. I mean, them people could have said, I want all the money you made out them. That's why in the beginning, if everybody knows, we started giving away the brushes because we couldn't, we couldn't sell them. 
I gave him a week. I lost a whole lot of money, even with the box of crayons palette. Like, that, this palette been out. Now, all of a sudden, you're saying change it. Okay, so cool. So, that's fine. I just changed it. I spent so much money for me just having to change it because it, it was already out. It was already in production. I had to stop production so they could look changes. They already made the palette, and I had to tell them trash it because bitch Crayola said I can't, I, I, I can't sell it. I don't know. I don't want people to think, you know, oh, I'm, so, I'm, I'm only mad at the fact that color outside the lines like... But I can't even sue with, sue with that because I didn't trademark that. It's a slogan. Like, you know, sometimes we don't think to trademark slogans. Like, it ain't that deep. Not only that, but they also use a different word color. So it's, it's little stuff like that that people, you know, could could get away with. So my thing is, I'm not... So I've done a little bit of research. I'm not sure if Color Outside the Lines is owned by Crayola in like the makeup industry or cosmetics industry or something. Simple Colors, the nail polish company has something about colors outside the line. So maybe Simple Colors might technically own it within cosmetics land as well. And what I see Supa saying is that Rayola seems to have collaborated with other companies, but now it seems like they want to form their own makeup company. And we cannot deny that a lot of companies have started doing that recently. This was in 2018. Companies started doing that probably around that time. I could recall in 2019, I believe, Cheetos partnered with Forever 21 to come up with their own makeup line. So you never know what these companies that you possibly are taking their packaging from, you never know what they're working on behind the scenes and maybe if they file like an intent to use application or if, if they even have a trademark within the field that you're using or attempting to use it in right now, you need to do your background test search and figure out whether it is available for you to use at all. And let's say like you selling some shit or whatever, but you're not selling in their class. They're not gonna come after you because you're no threat. Like me with, with like fucking, like compositional, compositional book. They can't fuck with me. I mean, this it's, it's, it's kind of transition. It's like I didn't, like I ain't even use their black and white design on purpose because because they could sue. But they probably wouldn't have because they don't they don't do. They're not in the makeup class. They're not in the cosmetic. Mm -hmm. copyrights and all that so they probably wouldn't even fuck with me but that's why crayola did that because they are in the makeup cosmetic class which they got they coming out with all lines so bitch before mm -hmm. we you know mm -hmm. before we come out with some shit and look like yours change your shit and that's fine yep. i'm copyrighted and trademark the crayon case this this palette copyrighted trademark all this shit my whole brand is trademark whole brand but bitch if they own these if they own something they can tell me take it off as I did. Mm. I like that Supa knows about classes, makeup class and stuff. You can tell that she's done her research or that she has lawyers in the back. She has looked into things that probably a lot of young business owners aren't looking into. And she was saying that I guess Crayola has something within the makeup class and they are working on things within the makeup class in their makeup line. It makes complete sense why they would tell her, hey, cut it out, don't do that. Now, are they inspired? I feel like it. But you were inspired by them first? Say. 18 months, my ass. You know, if they inspired. I mean, it's a very smart idea to come out with, to come out with some stuff that, you know, make you feel like a kid again. Mm. Yeah, it's smart as hell. Makeup is one of those things that you can really play on people's nostalgia. So I understand why people are coming out with like things like candy and using like cute little things like brats, be really girly and fun and play on people's nostalgia, but y'all gotta be careful. Y'all ain't doing it the right way. <laughs> you can still be fun and keep it a general concept and not exactly taking from a brand. Her concept is school supplies and it's working. The concept of baked goods, the bakery, it's working. A lot of people like to get outraged without understanding the reason why they shouldn't be. Because if it was you and your company that you built up to be a million dollar company and someone did something like this and they're going viral and they haven't taken profit from you, I'm sure you would be all up in arms too. But I don't like how somebody said them people have been out since 19 something. She only been out a year. That's that's what people do. Don't, don't come for me because I, I just came out. 
The problem isn't that Crayola has been in business for however long years. The Crayola is not the only company that is out there making crayons because I think we know Rose Art also has crayons as well. Crayola doesn't have like this monopoly on who gets to create crayons. Well, the problem here was using those specific trademarks, the green and yellow combo, the serpentine and the chevron. So that's why Crayola isn't telling them you have to stop. She, they're just telling you that one specific product in your whole line of products is very similar to our makeup line that's coming up and it will be confusing to customers and it's not okay because we own it. Get rid of it. It doesn't matter that Crayola started in 1900s because it's not like saying that she can't do crayons at all. She can. It's just change your packaging. It was such an eye opener because, you know, like we changed, like even when we got the box of crayons palette done, we tried everything to not make it look like nothing like dealing with Crayola. But we ain't know they own the green and yellow combo. We ain't know that. So everything else, everything else we come out with, we make sure that. It don't have no type of like like it's not on it, like it's not in, infringing on nobody brand. McDonald's own that gold, that gold color and they yellow. McDonald's own that. So if you come out with a gold jacket, that color, McDonald's ain't gonna come for you. But let you come out with a restaurant that sell burgers and fries and and, and, and use that same McDonald's gold. They can no. see you. when they come out with stuff. You know, like we don't do our research. <laughs> we don't do our research. Like we just trying to um, huh? It we don't do our research exactly that's the problem with a lot of entrepreneurs we want to start businesses because we want the dollar signs but we're not doing research we come out with stuff and like we don't do our, our research behind you know certain stuff you know so that's how we always get fucked because we just try to come out with some shit and just sell it without even worrying about if we taking somebody else's shit so all that was a big eye opener for me it was, it was a big like when they done me that it was a big, big, big eye opener for me. A lot of people own 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 font that you can't use. Oh, font, bitch. We're going to cover font in another episode, okay? I'm so excited. I might get ready to film that soon, but we're going to cover font. It's a complicated topic. It's even complicated for me to think about or try to articulate, but I did have a question about font in an Instagram live and I need to make sure that I address that properly. Fine, I'm talking about the way, like, like certain fonts. Like, let's say, like, somebody owned this font. Like, you, you, you can't use it. And that's just, you know, that's just being on your shit before you come out with some shit. That's all. Be on your A game. A lot of rappers. Come out. That's why when certain rappers come out and they name, you know, be popping, then all of a sudden they change their name because somebody mm. else owned their name. Mm. You can't use this name no more. You can't put it on no album cover. You can't put it on no shirt. The importance of actually searching your name and seeing if it is in any of the industries that you might pursue in the future. Like if you are a musician, for example, and you are thinking one day I'm going to be like Rihanna and come up with my own makeup line, my own fragrances, this, 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 that. Make sure that your name is not taken so that you can use your name in those individual fields. That's why I always say protect your brand, baby. Protect your shit. I love, do I your love. Research, make sure you ain't stealing nobody else's shit. And when you do it, protect us. People are steal your shit so fast. I love how business minded she is. And again, she's telling you to protect yourself. A lot of us are smaller people. So people might not be on your radar, but the bigger you get, the more viral, or if you really perceive yourself going viral, go ahead and take those steps to legally protect yourself. So that is the end of this reaction review. I really just wanted you guys to see this video to see how an entrepreneur struggles or had to deal with a problem that could have been avoided with proper research. It was a great learning lesson for Supercent herself and just for anyone in general. And a lot of people need to hear this story so that they can stop themselves from doing something really dumb <laughs> because too many people are trying to use another brand to evoke nostalgia, but you're doing it in the wrong way. You have to be careful.
with that being said let me know if you like these kind of reviews you know you can send me videos if you have any more of like entrepreneurs talking about problems or business problems please send me those videos because i would love to react to them and just give uh, opinion on what is going on there share this video with an entrepreneur who may need this kind of information let's stop ourselves from making mistakes in advance and i will talk to you guys in the next video bye